hello so now we're going to be looking at loci and i should mention that this is a very short topic and so we're just going to have only one section after which we're going to look at some past questions so what is a locus so first a locus is the plural of a loci and this is the part traced out by a point which moves in accordance with a certain laws so there are two key phrases you want to take note of and the first one is the part traced out by by points and the second keyword is in accordance with a certain law so you have a law that defines the path through which a point move so for instance let's assume you have a river as shown in this sketch over here so you have a river here and i tell you that a man moves along the coast of this river such a way that in such a way that at every point the man is a distance five meters away from the river so that means if the man is here the distance between the man and the river is what is five meters when the man moves to any other point distance between the man and the river must be five meters so at any point in which the man is the distance between him and the river must be five meters so if i join all those points together in which the man passes through so that defines the path in which the man moves through and as you can see the path is what path is parallel to the river so this defines what the locus is so here we have a certain law that defines how a point moves in order to form a path so now let's quickly look at what a bisector is a bisector is a line that divides something into two equal parts so let's assume that you have a line pq and you want to divide this line into two equal parts as you can see this line ab divides this line into two equal parts such that the distance between p and f is equal to the distance between f and q so this line is called a bisector so when the bisector is perpendicular to the line that it is dividing as you have in this case such that the line is perpendicular the angle between the bisector and the original line is 90 degrees then we refer to the bisector as a perpendicular bisector perpendicular bisector so this is the bi perpendicular bisector of line a b now you can have an angle as you can see here so we have this angle lkm angle lkj so a line that divides this angle into two as you can see this line m is also a bisector but in this case we refer to it as an angle bisector because it is dividing this angle into two equal angles so the angle here if i call it a is the same thing as this angle over here so generally when you are dealing with locus and bisector and things like this you have to make a great deal of construction but for the purpose of jam we need not know how to construct with compass and protector because you're not going to be tested on that so all you need to know is the reasoning behind the construction and how to interpret questions correctly and finally you must be really good at joint sketch to interpret the question so let's look at some common loci so first you have a cycle and this is defined as a set of points which are a given distance d from a given point so what does this mean let's assume you have a point as indicated by the center point p and tell us that a set of points that is at a given distance d from this point so that means i can draw let me just draw any line with distance d so i can draw as many as i want as long as the distance between the center and that point is d here it is d here it is d d and so on so the set of all these points if i join them together what do i have as you can see it will result in a cycle so that is why a cycle is defined as a set of points which are given distance d from the given point and that distance is what we know as the radius of the cycle let's look at another one a set of points which are at a given distance x 
from a given straight line AB. This is similar to the scenario in which we did before, in which a man is walking along the coast of a river. So now we have a straight line AB, like this AB, and we are told that a set of points which are at a given distance x from this given straight line. So we measure a distance x from this given straight line. So is at the distance x. This also is at a distance x. The distances must be the same. At any point, this is at a distance x from this line AB. This is at a distance x. So if I trace out all those points together, what do I have? As you can see, I have a straight line also, and that straight line is parallel to this line AB. And what does it mean for two lines to be parallel? It means that the lines can never meet and that the distance between the two lines are constant infinitely. So if I trace this line infinitely, the distance between them are constant. Therefore, they can never meet each other. So here yeah, we are told that a set of points which are equidistant from two given points A and B. So let's imagine you have two points and here you have A and here you have points B. And you want to trace out the points which are equal distances from A and B. So the first point that is equal distance is the center between A and B. So when I trace out that center or when I join A and B together, for example, the center is equal distance because it's from year to year is the same distance from year to year. Now, if I draw a line here from this point A, you can see that the distance between here and this point here is the same thing as the distance from this point here to this point here. Same thing I can do here. If I draw it at this point to point A and at this point to point A. Similarly, if I have beneath here and I draw a point to point B and a point to point B, you can see that the distance from here to here is the same distance as from here to here. And when you trace out all these parts or all these points, this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point, which are equal distances from A and from B, what do you get? You get a straight line that is perpendicular to the line AB. So as you can see, the line you get, or the path to trace out, is a line that is perpendicular to the line AB. So a set of points which are equidistant from two given points AB is the perpendicular bisector of the line AB. So now let's look at another example. And here we are told that a set of points which are equidistant from parallel lines AB and CD. So you have two parallel lines. We have AB. I'm sorry that my lines are not really straight. I have another parallel line here. We have CD. So these two lines are parallel to each other. So now I'm trying to look for the set of points which are equidistant from parallel lines A, B, and C, D. So what is the set of points that are equal or equal distances from this line and from this line? That would just be the point that is in between this line. So if I mark this point over here, I can see that the distance between here and here, if I call it A, is the same distances between here and here. So the center between these two lines is the point that is equal distance from A, B, and C, D. Same thing, this point here is equal distance from AB and equal distance from CD. Same thing with this same point here. Same thing with this same point here and so on. So if I trace out those points to give me the path, what do I have? I have also a straight line that is not only parallel to AB and CD, but also is equidistant from AB and CD. So I can see this line. Let me call it EF line EF, which is the Local, so the local now is parallel to line A, B, and C, D. And let me mark it by this so that they are parallel by this line. And also, distances between this line E, F, and line A, D is the same thing. This distance over here is the same thing as the distance between line C, F, and C, D. So, here is another one. And here we are told that a set of points which are equidistant from non-parallel lines A, B, and C, D. So when you have non-parallel lines, that means, for example, you have a line moving like this, and you have another line 
coming like this these two lines are non parallel lines so this is line one this is line cd and this is line ab so what is the set of points that is equidistant from these two parallel lines so we can see that the set of points that is equidistant to these parallel lines is the point or is the set of points that divides this angle into two equal halves so for example if i choose this part i can see that distance from here and here is equal same thing stands from this line and this line is equal same thing stands from this line and this line is equal i can come over here it stands from this line these two lines they are equal and so what do i have to do i just have to join all those points together And when I do that, I see that the set of points which are equidistant from two non-parallel lines A, B, and C, D is the angle bisector that is being formed by the line A, B, and C, D. So this angle formed between it, the line that bisects the angle into two curves is the set of points which are equidistant from two non-parallel lines A, B, and C, D. So let's try to solve a practical example. So here yeah, we are told that a pole stands vertically on horizontal ground. So let's assume you have the ground over here, you have the ground over here. Now you have a pole standing there. So a pole stands horizontal ground. So this is the pole. And now a wire is stretched tightly from the top of the pole to a point on the ground, some distance from the foot of the pole. So some distance away from the from the foot of the pole distance d a wire is stretched tightly from the top a wire is stretched from the top down to that point describe the locus of the lower end of the wire so the question asks us to trace the point or the set of points that is being moved by this point over here so the way i want you to think about it now is to imagine a pole being erected in the middle of the floor and you tie a rope towards this and you drag it to the ground and now you begin going around the pole if we trace out the path moved by that point you are going to find out that at every point the distance between the feet must be constant so you have distance d so when it gets here you have something like this so the pole would have moved to this position when it moves over here the wire would have moved to this position over here when it gets here, the wire will be in this position over here. And when it gets somewhere to the back, the wire will be in this position over here. So if I trace out all those points together, what do I have? And let me do that with a different color. So when I trace it out, I'm going to have what? A cycle. So the part in which the rope is going to make on the ground is going to be a cycle because it can only move fixed in this format round the pole so the locus of the lower ends of the wire is a cycle and that is indicated by the green line traced here so this pretty much sums up what you need to know with regards to loci so it really deals with understanding the question and being able to conceptualize things and think about movement in abstract terms if you're able to do this effectively then answering questions relating to loci should not be a challenge so in the next section we're going to look at some jump pass questions to see how this really plays out in relation to answering jump questions